The sharp drop in bond prices has spooked a lot of investors, and it's confused others. Bonds were not supposed to fall when everything else is falling, especially stocks. So what's going on, and is it time to bail on bonds? Today's ETF Battles features an audience-requested triple-header contest between three bond ETFs from BlackRock and Vanguard. So who wins the battle? Find out right after this. This is ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge, and it's great to see you again. We're in season three of ETF Battles. We're almost done with this season, and you can hit our playlist in the link below to watch all of our episodes from this season. Feel free to binge watch. We've had a lot of great battles, and thanks to you, our audience, you keep those battle requests coming. Send us your ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. Also, be sure to visit the description section below. We've got links in the form of resources for you, our audience, as well as a link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. Also, be sure to join the waiting list for our margin of safety investing tool. Again, hit the description section below. So today's ETF showdown was requested by Dr. Imad Rahim, and he sent us this request in our YouTube comment section as well as on Twitter. He really wanted to see this one. BLV, which is a long-term bond ETF from Vanguard, going up against two core bond ETFs, one from Vanguard as well as the other from Black BlackRock. And that's AGG from BlackRock and uh, BND from Vanguard. So judging today's ETF contest, we've got a formidable duo. We've got James Safort from Bloomberg and David Durking with Discreet.com. Judges, great to see you again. Hi, Ron. Good to be back. Hey, Ron. Thanks for having me back again. Happy to be here. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and yield are combined along with our mystery battle category. And our judges for the mystery category can pick whatever factor or maybe multiple factors that they feel are crucial to today's matchup. Uh, they can also opt for split decisions, take a pass, or nominate wild cards if they feel that uh, there's something better elsewhere. I've got the scorekeeping chores, and at the end of the show, we will declare an overall battle winner. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever known in advance by myself or any of our judges, nor are they predetermined. So let's kick things off with the first category, which is cost. David, please get us started. How do you see it between these three ETFs? Yeah, there's really not a lot of difference here. Uh, BND and AG are at three basis points. BLV is at four basis points. All three of these are very large ETFs, so there's no real issue on trading or spreads. Uh, it, one basis point different is kind of splitting here, so I'm just going to call this a split decision across all three of them. Thank you, David. James, you're up next. How do you see it in terms of cost? I mean, there's no arguing with what David said. <laughs> I mean, there are, even if you try to look at different levels of cost, you really like even spreads are tight. There's no, there's nothing going on here that would differentiate them too much. But I guess BND and AGG are tied as far as I'm concerned. At, at three basis points, that is. We got you down for split decision. Thank you, James. Next up is the exposure strategy category. So James, break it down for us. Yeah, so the first two, if you look at BND and AGG, um, there's you would be splitting hairs to find differences in their exposure. They are very, very, very similar, especially from the high level. Um, they're going to give you access to sovereigns like treasuries, um, bank exposure, and mortgages. Um, so pretty, very standard. Um, now, BLV, on the other hand, is a little different. Um, that is a long-term bond fund, so that exposure is going to be very different. It's going to be much longer term, higher duration exposure, things like that. Um, so if you want a core bond fund, um, unless you want very high um, duration exposure, different from just a regular core bond fund, you got to go with BND or AGG, and I don't think there is really a meaningful difference between the two of them. All right. Got you down. Be, be split decision there between BND and AGG. Thank you, James. You're up next, David. How do you see it between these three ETFs? Yeah, I agree with James on this one. I think it really comes down to uh, d looking at differences in composition and in duration. Uh, like James said, BND and AG are, uh, have the majority in, in government and mortgage-backed securities. 
BLV is a little more balanced between governments and corporates, and I kind of like that a little more compared to the other two. But again, with BLV, you're getting a lot of interest rate risk in there, so it's going to be a lot more volatile. Um, I'm going to throw out a wild card in this one, and it's IUSB, the iShares Core Total Bond ETF. Uh, the reason I'm looking at that one is it has a little bit more corporate bond exposure, so it's a little more balanced. It's got a little more international exposure as well, so... Uh, I, I think international has a good chance of sort of coming back in the next decade or so since it's uh, lagged for years and years now. So I just like the diversification on IUSB a little more. It's got the same duration risk as bond and ag, so uh, you're not too far out on the uh, interest rate risk spectrum. So I'm going to go IUSB with the win on that one. Thank you very much, David. Got you down for that wild card. Appreciate that. James, you're up next. Next category is performance. So break it down for us. Uh, how does the performance and yield shake down between these three funds? Yeah, I mean, there is virtually no difference between the performance, as I've been saying, between AGG um, and BND. So if you're looking at those two things, um, there's not much to talk about, to be quite honest. Um, but BLV has been crushed by them, as we mentioned, because BLV has a such much higher duration exposure. So if you look backwards, the performance is easy. It's AGG or BND, and it's essentially a tie. Um, but if you're looking forwards, depending on your view of like what the Fed is going to do, if you think the Fed is going to hike as, as expected or going to hike less than currently priced in, um, then BLV might be a better play if you think that you want more duration exposure going forward for performance. But uh, backwards looking, it's AGG or BND, and I split decision again, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I, I also love Dave's calling out of IUSB because I actually pulled that one up as, as a potential wild card in this. Um, so um, that's also similar uh, with, with AGG and BND though in performance. Just to confirm, because I don't want to put words in your mouth for performance, what is your winner or is it a split decision? You just clarify that. Uh, so I have to go split decision between B and D and AGG again, which I sound like a broken record, but it really is. Those are the two options here. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. You're up next, David. How do you see it when it comes to performance between these three ETFs? Yeah, I don't really have a lot of, to, to add to what James said. He's laid it out pretty clearly. Um, B and D and, and AG are virtually identical. Uh, yields are, are virtually the same. Performance is pretty much the same. So uh, split decision between those two. But again, um, BLV gets you about an extra basis point in yield, or I'm sorry, an extra 1% in yield. So, I mean, if you're really willing to sort of venture out on the risk spectrum to try to get that extra yield, or if you think interest rates are going to go down, um, then BLV might be the play. But uh, again, between the, the funds we're talking about here, BND and AG, a split decision between those two. Up until now, we've had a lot of split decisions. So let's shake things up a little bit and let's uh, create some chaos with our mystery battle category. This is where a judge can pick a single factor, maybe multiple factors to make their arguments and uh, hopefully some persuasive arguments. So, David, what is your mystery battle category and who wins it? Yeah, I like to take a look at the flows on these funds just to kind of get an idea of in, what investors are doing and what they're thinking. Uh, BLV, uh, again, has gotten hammered this year, so there's net outflows over the past year on that fund, not surprising. There is a difference between the other two, though. BND from Vanguard has taken in about $13 billion over the last uh, year. Egg has actually seen $3 billion in outflows, so there's a definite preference towards the Vanguard products on this. Uh, so based on flows, I would give the, the win to BND. I will mention again IUSB, though. Uh, it's taken in money this year on a relative basis. Uh, looking at how much it's taken in relative to flows, it's about on the same pace as BND. So investors are uh, moving their money into that one as well. Uh, but again, between these three ETFs, I'm going to give the win to BND based on investor interest and net flows. James, you're up next for your mystery battle category. What is it and who wins it? So I'm going to make my mystery battle category yield. Um, so in this instance, um, you're, you, like I said, I'm going to go with BLV here just because it is yielding more. It's roughly based on our calculations on a forward-looking basis, it's about 4.9% going forward. Um, 
that's Bloomberg calculations, I should specify, but it has a duration estimate of about 14.5, um, which is something that anyone buying this should be aware of. So if the Fed hikes more than expected or continues to hike rates more, more than the market is pricing, um, this will get hit harder. That said, it is going to yield um, a decent amount more than AGG or uh, BND or even IUSB. Um, Though IUSB, as Dave kind of alluded to earlier, is going to have a higher yield than BND and AGG itself. But in that order, it would go BLV, uh, IUSB, and then AGG and BND at the bottom. Who among these ETFs will win today's battle? Let's give our judges one final opportunity to give us their overall choice. And James, you're up. Give it to us. Overall, I'd probably just go with BND. Um, just it's simple. It's a Vanguard fund. It's a total bond fund. You know what you're getting. Um, it's a, but it really, it, to me, it's a, it ends up being a toss up between AGG and BND. Um, but if I have to pick one, I'll just pick BND. You've been hanging out with Eric Balchunas way too much, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would add that if, if I had to pick one here, I would I would probably pick IUSB as the alternative uh, dark horse, which is which wasn't part of the original three. If I had to pick one one fund to invest in in the space, even though it's a little more expensive. So is that one going to be your overall pick? I mean, you could nominate a wildcard ETF and have that be your winner. I'll pick IUSB as my alternative. I'll take IUSB as my alternative. That's what I'm talking about. Some surprises and shocks and unexpected turns. So we've got James with his overall winner being IUSB. David, your final chance to weigh in with your overall winner. Give it to us. Well, you're going to love this, Ron. I'm going to go with IUSB too. Uh, and it's really the deciding factor for me is that, uh, that discussion on composition we had earlier. I like it's a little more balanced between government and corporate bonds, and it's, and it's got a little more international exposure. So I think it's just... A little more diverse, but again, this this is really a close battle between uh, all of these funds. I think BLV you have to kind of set us off to the side a little bit because it's so uh, it, it's more unique than BND and AG. But uh, BND and AG and IUSB, I, I think it's really close. But I'm going to go with IUSB. Well, our judges have spoken, and according to my battle scorecard, today's winner is IUSB. This is a wild card nomination. That was given to us by David, and uh, he liked this particular fund, as mentioned, for its uh, balance between corporate as well as government bonds. Also, he liked the international spice or flavor to this particular uh, ETF. And actually, it was a surprise outcome, I got to say, because this was this particular ETF wasn't even on the battle scorecard. But again, that's why we've got wild cards to give our judges some flexibility and uh, their ability to choose other ETFs outside of the current battle matchup that may be a better choice in their view. And our judges agreed all together on IUSB from BlackRock. Um, so there you have a great job for both of our judges, James and David, for breaking down today's bond ETF contest. Wow, this was a great one. Love the surprises and the unexpected turns. And of course, for your insightful and provocative analysis. Guys, keep up the good work. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Be sure to visit the description section below. We've got research links to our judges. Plus, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. You'll also see in that same area of viewer resources from us. We've got online classes and financial tools, along with our upcoming release, our margin of safety tool, be sure to join the waiting list. Do not miss it. So which ETF battles would you like to see in our next episode? Post your ETF ticker symbols in our YouTube comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. If we choose your ETF battle, you win your choice of an ETF battle shirt or a coffee mug. I'm Ron Legge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.